I love storytelling. I love being on stage. So I was a, it, going back much further, my brother died when I was five years old. And I was a really, really shy kid. And that just turned me even more inward. My family just kind of combusted after that. And we never really, still to this day, we haven't really repaired that family unit after his death. Um, and I would literally go and hide in the kitchen cupboards and just like shut myself in, did not want to speak to people, was not interested in being involved in the chaos. My parents' marriage at that point was basically done and falling apart. It already was, but that just kind of was the final straw. My brothers were not doing well and I was very alienated. They both kind of like left, went off to college. So I was just alone in this chaos. Um, and my mom was desperate to find some kind of creative medium for me to work through these feelings and have some kind of outlet. And the high school that my brothers had attended, they, we still had a lot of friends that were there even after they had graduated. And they said, you know, we're doing a production of The Wiz and we want a bunch of little siblings to be the munchkins on stage. And I was like, absolutely not. I do not want to do this. My mom's friends were saying, this would be really good for Brett. Like just, you know, introduce her to some friends, you know, get her on stage. Maybe she can, because I had always like done ballet and danced. And so I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I do not want to do that. And then something clicked in my mind. And I was like, okay, maybe like, why not? Literally hiding in a cupboard. Like we would move from like three different houses and I was always just hiding myself. And I don't know what changed, but I'm so glad that I, you know, told my mom, okay, I'll go be a munchkin. Um, How long would you hide in the cupboard for? Gosh, like 15 to 30 minutes. I mean, it was would just you, a, Do you remember what you were thinking about when you were in the cupboard? Just like a silence bit. and peace. Just an Basically, escape. It was yeah. an escape. And so I think that was my way of coping. Like we lived in this tiny house in Chattanooga, Tennessee, down in the, um, down in the, closer to the downtown area. And it was like the cupboard that I had all of my little like baby kitchen tools mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, you know, make believe kitchen play and would go in there. And then we moved to this house on Signal Mountain in Chattanooga. And there was a super long, it was like a really, really long ranch style house. We had this really long dining room that had built in cabinets and I would go and I would sit in there. And so, yeah, I was literally, I remember having this conversation with my mom as I was like peeking out of the cupboard, like, okay, I guess I'll go do this show. But it was, it was like something just woke up inside of me. And I think it was because I got, it was a healthier kind of escape because I was able to pretend to be somebody else and live somebody else's experiences. And the community was incredible as a young person. And it was like, when I went on stage, I was just like a different person and just lit up. So I just wanted to do as much of that as possible. So the theater department at this high school continued to do that where they would bring in, you know, younger siblings and kids to play little parts in their role in their shows. So I would do that. And then I started doing community theater and it just kept snowballing to where I was like, I want to do more and more and more. And I was homeschooled. So I had the, the time best. and the flexibility <laughs> to do that. Mm -hmm. So I was dancing, I was doing singing lessons, you know, I would beg my mom to, you know, drive me to Atlanta to do this like repertory theater. They're in, they're doing Annie. I really want to do Annie. Um, and then I wrote, when it got professional was when I did, my first paid job was doing opera at the Atlanta Symphony and opera. It was in Lab OM. I was like eight. And then I wrote a letter to a manager in New York City because I had seen that he managed a lot of the young women who were in, you know, Mary Poppins and in the new Annie. And at the time, Billy Elliot was huge on Broadway. So he represented a lot of these young actors. And so I wrote him a letter and I drew a picture of myself on Broadway, literally at like 10 years old. And I said, I want to do this. And I flew up there. I auditioned for him. And so he wrote back. He did. He did. He wrote. It's like back. I love this girl. Yeah, exactly. This is, <laughs> this is like the most this ridiculous thing I've ever seen. It was a huge piece of art. And for oh, the so you, it time, was like a drawing. Oh, was yes. It, was it a painting or a drawing? It was like a multimedia art. Wow. Like I had like curtains on it and it was a whole thing. And he represented me for, oh, gosh, like 12 years, I think, until I start, stopped acting during COVID. And he had that over his desk the entire time because he was like, nobody did anything like that. But basically, I was very precocious. I think this, the question that a lot of people ask is, you know, did your mom push you into this? Why would your mom put you into, you know, child acting? She was very apprehensive, did not want me to do it, but nothing else fueled my spirit the way that being on stage did and the way that performing did. And she always said, my brother who passed away is David. And she always said, you know, if David had wanted to do something and I knew that I only had 17 years with him, would I have, would I have taken him to Atlanta? Would I have taken him to New York to do this? How, how old was he when he passed away? 17. Yeah, he had a heart attack. Um... And so that's the reason why we did all of this. And I think it was kind of an escape for her as well because it was it was healing to be able to do that with a child. And 
my parents' marriage was already kind of falling apart. And so it kind of gave them distance in a way because mm-hmm. we were traveling and I would go back and see my dad and then, you know, go back out on the road. How did it help you deal with the death of your brother to do acting? Because I got to work through the emotions that I was too scared to, and not, not equipped enough to deal with in my own personal life through a safe environment. So it was like I could go on stage and play a different 12 year old girl who's going through things. And I was in a safe environment to express those emotions that I didn't feel safe enough to express at home. Um, and that's why I think that, you know, conservatives, I think that we don't do a great job on art and on creativity. I think that we look down on a lot of art, but it is such a powerful medium for healing and for, especially for young people for expressing themselves. That's why make-believe is so important for young people and your imaginations is so important. So I got to do that on literally like a very like large scale of big stage. Um, and so I think, you know, the same way that imagination and play is so important for young people, like that at a very high level was what it was for me. What was your favorite role to play and why? It's a terribly hard question. Um, one of. One of, yeah. Um, 